What's up everybody? Today we're gonna walk through a couple of key mods for Starfield, including a new one that just dropped that supports frame generation on Nvidia's 40 series cards. I'm gonna try and make this as quick and to the point as possible. So as I'm sure you're aware, you've all heard by now, Starfield is truly stunning game and a blast to play right out of the box. Um, it has a few glaring misses. The first being lack of support for Nvidia's DLSS, both for upscaling and frame gen on newer cards. I mean, this is no surprise really as Bethesda chose to partner with AMD on the game. The other issue, and one that is just silly to not be included on a game released in 2023, is the lack of support for adjusting field of view. That's okay though, because the modding community has us covered dropping mods for both of these features right out of the gate. And while the DLSS mods initially only supported upscaling, as of today, there's a new one that works with Nvidia's frame gen as well on the 40 series cards. While I've been going through the intro, what you see in the background is the stock Starfield experience using AMD's FSR2, and while not bad, there are some noticeable issues with artifacting and an extremely narrow field of view. Let's tackle the field of view first, as that's going to be the simpler fix and doesn't require anything other than a quick copy-paste. So you'll start off by going to Documents, then My Games and Starfield. Inside the folder, you should see something that looks like this right here. I've seen a few videos telling you to add a TXT file and make some changes, but really, all you need to do is copy the existing .ini file and paste it inside the folder. Then we're going to rename it to Starfield Custom.ini, uh, no spaces, and make sure you pay attention to the caps as it is case sensitive. Next, we're gonna open that file, delete everything inside and replace it with what you see here. No worries, if you check the description in the video, I have it saved there for you to quickly just copy and paste it in. Also, there's gonna be links to the mods that we'll be using in the next step to make this as easy as possible for you guys. Now, save the file, shut it down, and that's it. When we launch the game, it is obvious how much of an improvement there is. Our field review has expanded significantly. So this is something I do expect the actual devs to update at some point. So depending on when you're watching this, it may or may not already be fixed. Um, and that's also why I chose to show this in 21 by nine to really highlight the difference. Sorry for you guys if there's the black bars are driving you crazy. This next stage is a um, few more steps, but still fairly simple. Now we're gonna add the mods for DLSS and frame gen. You can head over to Nexus Mods or again, just click the link in the description. By the way, if you've already installed previous DLSS mods, you'll need to remove those before adding this one that supports the frame gen. When you go over to files, you'll notice two different versions, one for Steam, one for Game Pass. Uh, we're using Game Pass, so we'll download that file. It's gonna let you know that you'll also need the DLL and DLLG files. Ignore that for now. We are gonna come back in this for step two. Um, I've seen a lot of people telling you to drag and drop or copy and paste. Honestly, I find it much easier when doing this to just extract the files directly to the correct folder. So for Game Pass, that's gonna be your C drive, then Xbox games, Starfield, and finally content. Once you've extracted the files there, you'll see a new folder in it called Streamline. Now that we have that done, we're gonna go back and download the last two files we need. Again, they're both linked in the description or in the actual mods description itself. Tech Power Up made this super easy to grab these quickly. Same process, you'll extract both, but this time we're gonna select the new Streamline folder as our destination. Now let's launch the game. Make sure you have FSR2 turned on, which is now using the DLSS files. These next few things are personal preference, but I like to set my film grain down to 0.5 and render to 75%, which would be the quality setting if this was natively supported. Now when we dive in, not only do you see a huge improvement in fidelity and much less artifacting, but also a massive jump in FPS with the frame gen. Uh, I've played this for a couple hours now and really 
I can't notice the difference in latency. That's a lot of people's big complaint about um, DLSS frame gen is it adds latency. In my opinion, it is well worth it, especially if you are running a 4070 or a 4070 Ti and trying to get good frame rates. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content. And as always, thanks for watching.